Um, I want to kind of get your read on the amount of flexibility that you have given the trade-off you're trying to strike. Uh, uh, what are some of the shorter term goals in the next six months? I think the uh, first priorities for us are to kickstart a capital investment cycle. There's been, um, obviously we've been badly affected by the pandemic in the last two years. I think the worst of the pandemic appears to be behind us. And the, um, what's now, what we consider to be the best way forward is to do a lot of spending on public infrastructure, which in turn will probably catalyze a restart of the private investment cycle. So that's what's reflected in our spending priorities. There's a big increase in capital spending on roads, railways, telecommunications, and other infrastructure projects. There's also some support to our state governments for capital expenditure. So that, in essence, is the key uh, driver of this budget. TV, good morning. It's Manus in Zurich. To that point, you are boosting the deficit to 6.4% and CapEx up by 35%. The, the, the fight back from the private sector, which you're trying to spur, is that you risk crowding out, going with such huge uh, government CapEx you are going to crowd out the very sector you're trying to stimulate. What do you say to those detractors? First, I think I need to correct something that you said. We're not increasing the deficit. The deficit was 9.2% in 2021. It's 6.9% of GDP this year, and it's going to be 6.4% of GDP next year. So we're actually consolidating. Uh, in terms of what you said about crowding out versus crowding in, I, I, there is, of course, the risk of crowding out, but right now, private investment intentions are low. Bank credit is not exactly booming. There are not too many private projects that are looking for investment, looking for funds. So it's a balance, and we think that this is a time when creating the conditions for a restart of investment are served best by the government actually doing some infrastructure investment. And then maybe this is something that will not require to be continued in future fiscal years. Uh, we were looking for some clues on the divestment targets. And uh, what stood out to us is that there wasn't much reference at all vis-a-vis uh, -vis the previous budget. Is that because market conditions have fundamentally changed to make it less advantageous for these companies to come to market? Or uh, is there another reason for it? No, there is another reason for it, which is that in the past, the government has used disinvestment, divestment targets as a means of funding the fiscal deficit. But last year, we announced a new public sector enterprise policy, which for the first time used the word privatization. There's been a policy shift. We now look at disinvestment not as a means of providing funds for the budget, but as a means of boosting productivity, efficiency in the economy. And what that means is that the timing of deals, the kind of deals that we do, are not necessarily the easy ones that can provide some money to the FISC, but don't actually do much for the economy. We are now taking on more difficult ones. Like, for instance, we recently finished the privatization of Air India, the first, if I may say so, the first privatization in India since 2003. The first time a public enterprise has been handed over to the private sector. But that doesn't bring much cash into the fiscal uh, books because the cash amount of the transaction is low. But the impact it has on the aviation industry is quite significant. In the same way, we've got other transactions where existing public uh, sector companies are divesting to the private sector. Now, that money doesn't flow into the fisc. But it's very important for the economy. So there's an iron and steel company in Orissa that has just been disinvested from one of the government's public undertakings. So we're shifting the emphasis from looking at ways to sell a few shares here and there and make some money for the FISC to actually trying to privatize undertakings, get the efficiency gains. That's a more difficult, long, drawn-out process. And that means that we have to be more um, conservative in terms of estimating actual inflows into the fiscal uh, system. But there's no change in our policy. We are committed to the policy that was announced last year, which is that all enterprises in non-strategic sectors will eventually be private. 
And I suppose one of those ambitions is in the insurance side, LIC. You know, you talk about not just doing piecemeal deals. Well, this would be a, a big proposition for the market. When will that come? And how much of that uh, insurance business do you think that you will sell? So there are two things. Uh, LIC is a life insurer which is held by the government, and that's not a privatization transaction. That's an initial public offering. It will happen in March. It's uh, scheduled to happen this March, and we have assumed that we will be making this offer in March in the revised budget estimates for the current year. Uh, we are also looking to privatize another general insurance company, and that will be a privatization, but that will not happen this financial year. That will probably happen next financial year. Uh, the budget has taxed digital currencies at 30 uh, percent. What does it mean for the fate of the crypto bill? Does that mean that cryptos are going to get legalized in India? What's your current view? See, crypto assets, we don't call them cryptocurrencies, but crypto assets are currently neither illegal nor are they encouraged. So they are in a sort of gray area. They're not illegal. I mean, it's not illegal to buy or sell crypto assets in India. And it continues to be not illegal. But we've now put in a taxation framework that treats crypto assets the same way that we treat winnings from horse races or from bets or from other speculative transactions. So it's being taxed at the same rate as speculative transactions and not at the same rate as financial market transactions. Uh, what will happen to the future regulation of crypto? That's an ongoing debate. But I think the government's approach is to consult widely and also to look at what's happening internationally in terms of crypto regulation. So we're not going to jump the gun on crypto regulation, but we're going to make sure that any uh, income that is earned is liable to taxation.